Now, the race to replace Jens Stoltenberg as NATO chief is well underway. This comes at a time when the military alliance faces multiple challenges, from the Russia-Ukraine war to keeping the 31 bloc together. Now, various experts have claimed that Stoltenberg has done a wonderful job of holding the alliance together through multiple crises. But who are the top contenders to replace Stoltenberg? The first one is UK's Defence Secretary, Ben Wallace. The 53-year-old UK minister is well-connected and respected across the alliance. UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak has also signalled his support for the Defence Secretary. Wallace, a former captain in the British Army, is seen as a leading contender to replace Jens Stoltenberg, who will retire as NATO Secretary General in October after two terms. However, many diplomats have signaled to keep a former leader of a country for the top job. And according to reports, Denmark's Prime Minister Met Fredriksson, who met with Joe Biden in Washington very recently, is also thought to be in the running, as she aims to become NATO's first female chief. Just last year, Fredriksson emerged as a staunch supporter of Ukraine in its war against Russia. Now, this gained her international recognition and respect for her efforts to strengthen Western unity. However, she has said that she is not considering to take the NATO's top job. NATO's strongest member, the United States, has not so far thrown its weight behind any candidate. Other names suggested by diplomats and reports are Estonian Prime Minister Kaya Kallis. Another name, European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen of Germany. Also, Canadian Deputy Prime Minister Christia Freeland. Now, various international affairs experts have pointed out that Stoltenberg's successor needs to be a highly skilled communicator who can rally political, diplomatic and military factions around a shared vision, the Western vision. The person needs to be firm against Russia and at the same time, the next NATO chief also needs to have a new strategy towards the Indo-Pacific region. Now for more on this, Professor David Dunn is joining us live from England. He is a Professor of International Politics at the University of Birmingham. Welcome to the broadcast, sir. Good afternoon. Now, before we dive into the future, Professor, let's take a look at the past for now. Jens Stoltenberg took charge of NATO back in 2014, just a month after Russia first invaded Ukraine to annex Crimea. Then, of course, eight years later, Russia launched another invasion that we are seeing being played out as we speak. How has NATO evolved under Jens Stoltenberg's tenure? Well, the evolution has taken a variety of forms. Uh, most significantly in strategic terms is that NATO has indicated its willingness to consider being involved in Asia-Pacific security questions. And that, of course, is a first uh, for the alliance. So you know, that's a fundamental one. The other uh, aspect of Stoltenberg's leadership is a robust response to, to the NATO aggression in Ukraine, both after 2014 and after the, invasion, the latest full-scale in, invasion, rallying NATO, trying to get it to improve its spending on defense and preparedness, uh, its active measures. And of course, uh, under his tenure, we have had the applications to join NATO, uh, most recently, of Finland and, and Sweden. And, and so the alliance has now uh, doubled in size uh, over its core for most of its uh, life. And it's now 31 nations in, in, in size. So it's a much bigger, much stronger, much more global player on the world stage uh, than it was when, it, when Stoltenberg took over in 2014. Right. Now, it seems to us that the next NATO chief has two issues, broadly speaking. One is, of course, to tackle the contemporary geopolitics that we also mentioned and you also briefly mentioned. And two is to navigate old and new fault lines within the alliance. Would you agree? Uh, absolutely. It's a very difficult political job to try and balance. Uh, the Americans are the ones that provide most of the resources for NATO, and they historically provide the, the military chief of the alliance, and it's the other members 
who provide traditionally European members who provide the Secretariat General. But within that, there are lots of fault lines within Europe. Uh, so, for example, you mentioned Ben Wallace and Richie Shunak is pushing the candidacy of Ben Wallace in Washington uh, just now. But for, for the French, for example, they want someone who's from the EU. And of course, Britain is no longer in the EU and therefore they are opposed to Wallace for those political reasons. Uh, I, others think that Germany uh, is unsuitable because it doesn't spend enough on defence, which would be a problem for Ursula von der Leyen, who was also mentioned uh, as a candidate. Uh, then there's a question of the individual qualities of the person they need to be of high stature. So again, is Ben Wallace as Defence Secretary senior enough? Perhaps it needs to be a, dep a former a Prime Minister or at least a Deputy Prime Minister. And they have to be subtle enough to actually navigate the, the difficulties of not being too hawkish on Ukraine, but hawkish enough to rally support. So there are many different factors that make this a, a difficult job to do. And as a consequence, difficult for analysts from the outside to guess who that would be, because there is no one obvious candidate to, to fill that role. All right, Professor David Dunn, thank you for decoding us for that, the, not just the past, but also the future of NATO. Thank you for joining us on this broadcast and bringing us all your insights. Your pleasure.